And what do you think? Nothing there. That trap, it's like it got drug way back in the hole or something. I don't think I could have put it that deep if I wanted to. Ha! It did get drug. All right, well one down. I think I'm gonna go around and knock all these mounds down. So when I come back and check this, I'll know if we still have a problem or if this guy was uh, the only one out here. Kind of doubt that, so we'll see. Well, that's a good way to start the day. Now, if I caught the one at my house, it'd be even better. Today, we got a list like always, so we better get after it. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. We're at the steer pasture and they see me and they're letting me know that they're ready to move. Hey guys, you're waiting for me. You never do that. Actually, this is a great time to get a good look at them because they're all just standing right here. I can get close. I've got their attention. They're not trying to move away from me and graze. Let's take advantage of it, right? Now there, you see that? As soon as I open the gate, they're gone. Not much else to do here, so I guess we'll head back home because there's plenty to do there. Let's see if lightning struck twice. Ha, look at there. A couple days ago, I put the pigs in this big pen here in hopes that they would clean up the fence lines so that I could turn the hot wire back on. And they have done a little bit, but what I've noticed now is that they're touching the wire and they have no respect for it. So that's, that's not good. We don't want to train them that way. So I'm going to come through here with the weed whacker and anywhere that is not clean enough to run a hot wire, we're going to clean it up and then get the wire set up, turn it on. These pigs can go to school and learn what hot wire is. All around through here looks pretty good, especially where the uh, grapevine is. They seem to like to eat those, uh, but we get a little further down and they have not cleaned it up quite as well. Why are you guys following me? looking much better now I think uh, I think we're ready to go just gonna move this down to where they will hit it you don't want it so low they go over but you don't want it so high they can go under it when the pigs are bigger we'll want the wire at about the same spot because by then they'll be trained to it but they will still root right up next to it so you kind of want it down low when they're rooting they'll hit it the pigs are pretty smart. It doesn't take them long to figure out to leave this thing alone. <laughs> Problem with working in a pig pen is they're so curious in everything that you do. They're gonna touch this wire 10 times before I get it finished, but that's just the way it is. Tighten it up here. I should have brought the tool, but I didn't.
course, now that the hot wire is up, nobody wants to get anywhere near the fence line. So I got my tester here. Let's see. Let's see where we're at. Well, you saw the meter, 9,900 volts. That'll do it. This guy's about to learn his lesson. Well, it is working as intended. A couple weeks ago, we incubated some eggs out of our layer hens that are back there at the house. And we ended up getting, gosh, I wanna say maybe 14 or 15 chicks out of that. From the time that they hatched until now, they're raised in a little cage on our counter, but now they've outgrown that cage and I need to move them into one of the big brooders here. They don't really need a brooder for like heat or anything like that. It's just that they're too small. They would get through poultry net and we want to wait till they're a little bit bigger before we introduce them to the flock. So they're going to stay in here for a little while. And when they get a little bit bigger, we'll move them back home. These chicks are the result of a mating between two of my Rhode Island Red roosters and then our flock of layer hens, which are made up of Rhode Island Reds and Barred Rocks. So with the red chicks, we pretty much know what they're gonna look like. But the black chicks, which are half Rhode Island Red, half Barred Rock, I'm not really sure what they're gonna end up looking like, but they ought to be good layers. Last video, you guys saw me set this gate frame in the ground, but for me, that was this morning. So I'm gonna keep uh, watering down the concrete here because I didn't mix it properly in a mixer. I just kinda poured a little dry in the hole, sprayed some water, tamped it with a T-post and so on and so forth. So usually when I mix it that way, I'll come back in the afternoon and wet it down again just to make sure that dry stuff has some moisture to suck up. I'm pretty sure this is set up enough that I could take my spreader brace out here. When I welded up this frame, the legs pinched in together a little bit at the bottom. It wasn't bad, but it, it was noticeable. So in order to get a 43 inch spreader brace, I happened to have a 41 inch two by four. And the only thing I could find or think of around here that was a perfect two inches was this ball mount. So if you were wondering, why my spreader brace looked the way that it did, that's why. Getting this gate frame installed is really actually exciting for me because not only does it symbolize the fact that I will never have to mess with these flimsy panels here ever again, but I'm also looking at this thinking, hey, there's some new places I can mount a GoPro up there. Let's run home and grab a four wheeler and get these cows moved. It is pasture moving time and I see that uh, several calves have gotten on the wrong side of the hot wire. They don't seem to have any trouble getting to the wrong side, but boy, when you need them to come back to the right side, they just can't figure that out. So we'll take the wire down, make it a little easier for them. Someone forgot to tell that calf he needs to run in front of the camera, not behind it. Doesn't make a very good video when he runs behind it. Come boss. I'll open this gate first because the older cows are used to crossing through here, but Usually I'll have like a handful of calves and maybe a cow or two that just doesn't want to go this way. So what I do with them is I let them go through the other gate that they've been going through to get up to the corral. And it looks like uh, we've got a handful that need to do that. You stay. Yeah, we got a pile of calves down there and it looks like Rivet is with them for some reason. I don't think I've ever seen him miss a gate, but I guess 
there's a first time for everything. Come on, you guys. The gate's in the same place it's always been. Come on, Rivet. Yeah. Don't be giving me that back top. So you see the reason I do it that way is it's a lot easier with calves specifically to get them to go through a gate that they're used to traveling through. They already know it's there and it's all good. But when you try to ask them to go through a gate that they're not really used to, that's when you can have problems. Walk through that scary fly sprayer though. Okay, everybody's happy again. That is, except for Callie, she's wanting to get out here with me in the worst way. Were you wanting to come out here? Well, I threw it hard enough, it should work. I think that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.